Hello, everyone! Welcome to another episode of React to Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Meta, and today we've got a thought-provoking topic on our plate. We're delving into the age dilemma, examining global marriage standards. So, let's jump right in! You know, when we look back in history, we find that the idea of the right age for marriage has been quite fluid. Kings, political figures, even religious leaders, many tie the knot at what we might consider a young age today. It's fascinating how societal norms have shifted over time. Before we dive deeper, it's crucial to recognize that different cultures have varied views on marriage age. What's considered normal in one part of the world might be quite different in another. We're all shaped by our cultural backgrounds, and that plays a big role in how we perceive things like marriage. Now, let's talk about maturity. We all know age alone doesn't define maturity. I've met incredibly mature teenagers and, well, let's say less mature adults. Maturity is complex, and it involves emotional, psychological, and financial readiness. It's not just about the number on your birthday cake. Turning our attention to the legal side of things, governments around the world have set different ages for marriage. Some say 18 is the magic number, but that's not universal. Laws can change, and they have changed over time. It's a reminder that what's legal today might not be tomorrow. Lastly, it's eye-opening to consider global perspectives. What's acceptable in one region might be unheard of in another. There are still places where early marriages are considered okay. Understanding these differences helps us appreciate the diversity of human experiences. Reflecting on history, we find intriguing tales of leaders and figures who embarked on the journey of marriage at what we might deem an early age today. The dynamics were different, societal expectations varied, and the idea of adulthood wasn't confined to a specific number. It sparks the question, are our contemporary norms merely a snapshot in time, or will they too evolve into stories for future generations to ponder? Zooming into cultural nuances, we discover a mosaic of beliefs and practices shaping marriage age. From elaborate ceremonies to unique rites of passage, cultures around the globe infuse diverse perspectives into the very fabric of matrimony. It begs us to ponder, can there truly be a one-size-fits-all approach to something as intricate and culturally embedded as marriage? Delving deeper into the realm of maturity, we uncover the essence of personal growth. The age at which one may feel emotionally or financially prepared for marriage is as unique as a fingerprint. It challenges us to consider whether our societal emphasis on a specific age is a pragmatic measure or if it overlooks the rich tapestry of individual experiences and journeys. As we navigate legal frameworks, it's essential to recognize that laws aren't stagnant but living entities. They adapt to the evolving needs and perceptions of society. What is considered acceptable at one point in history may be subject to change. The legal age is a reflection of societal values, and perhaps it's an indicator of our collective stance on the responsibilities tied to marriage. Venturing into global perspectives, we find a kaleidoscope of attitudes toward marriage. Acknowledging the diversity of views invites us to reevaluate our own cultural biases and preconceptions. Could the idea of a universal age for marriage be a limitation in understanding the rich array of traditions, values, and norms that color the global panorama of matrimony? In our modern landscape, the number 18 often acts as an implicit boundary, defining the age of consent and framing our perceptions of marriage. It's a psychological phenomenon known as presentism, a lens through which we interpret historical or cultural practices based on our current societal norms. We tend to judge individuals of the past or different cultures through the prism of the age 18, as if it were an immutable benchmark. But, let's pause and reflect. If the government were to redefine this age to, say, 25 a decade from now, would that retrospectively label those who marry at 18 as minors or accuse them of attraction to minors? Such a notion seems absurd, highlighting the folly of viewing history through the narrow confines of our present understanding. Similarly, when we delve into historical accounts of individuals marrying at younger ages, we must resist the temptation to impose our contemporary judgments. It is a misguided perspective to label them as attracted to minors or, even more erroneously, as pedophiles based solely on an arbitrary number. Instead, let's engage our intellect and logic to appreciate the diversity of human experiences, recognizing that societal norms evolve, and our understanding of morality should extend beyond the confines of a numerical benchmark. 
The notion that marriage before the age of 18 is inherently immoral is a perspective often rooted in societal norms and cultural biases. It's crucial to recognize that the age at which one is deemed eligible for marriage is essentially a government-imposed regulation, subject to change over time. The idea of 18 as a legal age is a relatively recent development in the grand timeline of human history. Before the establishment of such benchmarks, the concept of a standardized age for marriage did not even exist. Medically speaking, the onset of puberty, occurring typically between the ages of 9 and 13, marks the transition into physical adulthood. Biologically, individuals at this stage are capable of reproduction, challenging the notion that age alone is a determinant of readiness for parenthood. The ability to conceive or father a child does not align neatly with societal perceptions of maturity or morality. Understanding that the legal age of marriage is a construct that can evolve over time prompts us to reevaluate the association between age and morality, acknowledging the intricate interplay of cultural, legal, and medical dimensions in shaping our views on matrimony. The assumption that turning 18 magically transforms an individual into someone psychologically mature and ready for responsibilities lacks scientific support. The reality is that maturity, especially concerning financial and relationship responsibilities, doesn't inherently correlate with age. There are instances where individuals in their 30s or 40s may exhibit immaturity and struggle with responsibilities, while others at a younger age demonstrate remarkable wisdom and capability. Financial success and stability also defy age constraints. Millionaires at the age of 9 to 13 challenge the conventional belief that financial acumen comes with years of experience. Conversely, there are instances of jobless and financially struggling individuals well into their 30s or 40s. These variations underscore the point that age alone cannot serve as a reliable indicator of an individual's readiness for marriage or life responsibilities. Therefore, it becomes imperative not to judge or ridicule historical figures who may have married at younger ages based on our contemporary perceptions. Recognizing the diversity of human experiences and acknowledging that maturity is a multifaceted trait can lead to a more nuanced and compassionate understanding of different cultural and historical practices. The notion of compatibility in marriage often falls victim to societal norms and age-based judgments. Take, for instance, a scenario where a woman is 45 years old and her partner is 25, or a historical context where a significant age gap exists between a man and a 9-year-old girl. In today's framework, these situations might be dismissed as incompatible or judged based on the perceived norm of 18 as a suitable marriage age. However, it's crucial to step back and recognize that medical adulthood is not dictated solely by age, but by biological and physiological factors. Cultural and religious contexts, as well as historical practices, have often embraced diverse age dynamics in marriages. What may seem unconventional in one societal paradigm may be perfectly acceptable in another. Instead of hastily passing judgment, it's essential to appreciate the broader spectrum of human relationships and marriages, understanding that compatibility transcends age. Embracing this perspective allows us to respect the diversity of cultural practices and acknowledge that the measure of a successful and harmonious marriage extends beyond the confines of age-based expectations. And there you have it, everyone! We've delved into the intricate layers of the age dilemma, examining global marriage standards. It's a multifaceted subject, resisting simplicity and revealing itself as a rich tapestry interwoven with cultural, historical, and individual threads. As we conclude this insightful discussion, I implore those of you with a logical mind and wisdom to refrain from assessing others through the narrow lens of a mere number, like 18. True understanding extends beyond arbitrary benchmarks, and your thoughtful perspectives can contribute significantly to our shared knowledge. In the spirit of intellectual exploration, I invite you to share your insights and experiences in the comments below. Let's cultivate a community where judgment is replaced by open-minded dialogue and mutual respect. If you resonate with the depth of this conversation, consider subscribing to our channel. By joining, you become part of a community that values thoughtful exploration. Until our next exploration, stay logical, stay wise, and above all, stay respectful. This is Mr. Meta, signing off. Goodbye. Please like, share, and comment on video. Do not forget to subscribe.